The clear opinion, my wife and I have been married for 15 years. She struggled early on in our marriage with her faithfulness, mainly due to alcohol, but we've been solid for the last 10 years. Out of the blue, two weeks ago she propositioned the idea of an open marriage. I didn't take it too seriously at first because she says things in completely 180 a short time after. But after a few days she still wanted to discuss it. My head and heart said absolutely not. I told her I would consider it, but only after we talked to a couple that we know that have the same open relationship we were discussing. Fast forward three days later again, she's talking to this guy, who she hasn't spoken to in 20 or so years about hanging out and road tripping. She tells him that we have an open relationship so it's cool and I wouldn't be mad. Not sure how to fully approach it, I tell her I don't really know about the open relationship idea. She was adamant that nothing would happen, she just wanted to hang out and chill with him. She said she even told him as much that nothing would happen. I asked her, for reassurances, to show me that she told him that. She balked and got mad and said she hadn't actually said it but swore nothing would happen. The next day, not even wanting to take chances, I took a leap and bought her another ring, telling her I wanted us to renew our vows to each other in a real wedding. Courthouse vows the first time, she was elated and was seemingly cool about dropping the open relationship idea. Fast forward to yesterday afternoon, evening and she's messaging him again, I find this out from her tablet which also has her messenger on it that was left in our room and it was constantly going off as I was trying to catch a nap before work. She's telling him that we shut down our open relationship because a guy she had previously hooked up with was constantly messaging me, which never happened, and that they could still hang and they just had to be more hush-hush about it. I loosely confront her about it, trying to give her a chance to be honest. Instead, she gets angry with me, saying she told him that nothing would happen and they were just going to hang out. She tried showing me her messages, which she had deleted the condemning ones. I told her I saw what was written and she immediately fell silent, then once again became upset because I invaded her privacy. After a night full of talking, we worked things out. She agreed not to speak with him anymore and that she was sorry for everything and she just liked the attention he gave her. She's very self-conscious about her size after three kids, and it just made her feel sexy again. So, I guess my question to everyone is, is there any way I can, should trust her moving forward? She seemed very sincere about things and truly apologetic about things. Hell, we even had the best bonding we've had in years, not that it's ever bad, this was just truly that phenomenal, just this morning but I still have this pit in my stomach like she's not going to change. I wasn't even remotely being irrational. The ring, it was a cheap $20 ring, was done to completely lift any responsibility of not trying on my part. Now with the screenshots I took, everyone can see her for the manipulative troll up she is. Plus, I'm sure will look good in divorce proceedings. I know I did my part to try to make it work, I know I'm a hell of a good guy that deserves better. Maybe when she ends up in the trailer park with an STD, she'll get it finally. Deep down always knew the time would come. Yes, the optimistic part of me convinced myself all was good. Writing this post was a quasi-rhetorical question. I guess just wanted to see other people convince me I was being an idiot. If you're going to cheat, at least upgrade. Better looking, richer, whatever. Ah oh well, enjoy the guy who may or may not smack you around some. Bed made, lie in it. Sure, there's been plenty already laid in. We're both 38. In hindsight, yes, she acts the way she does because deep down she knows how much better I was, and than her. That's not meant to be an ego trip but reality in the past 24 hours or so have kind of given me clarity to everything. She cares about what she wants, how she wants, when she wants. Simple as that. The ring was a dumb move. But funny you mentioned the wallet thing. Exactly what I told her when she asked for 50 yesterday, that I hear that's the going rate on the street for X job and to call him up and see if he'll fork it over for the favor. Needless to say, it didn't go over well. Much happier since I gave the boot after that. My comment. What else can you do? Seriously? You tell your wife clearly and plainly that you will not accept an open marriage. Period. You tell her that your marriage is not open and will not be open, and any attempts on her part to act in that direction will be a choice to end the marriage. You tell her that she will not go on any trip with any other man. You tell her that she will terminate communication with this other man immediately. You tell her that you will have free and open access to all her devices, and she's welcome to the same. It's not a negotiation, it's a statement and it's a hard boundary. You tell her that if she feels your marriage is lacking, then you can discuss it in marriage counseling but the marriage will not be open. Then you go see a lawyer right away and have divorce papers drawn up on the basis of adultery, if that's relevant where you live. Be ready to hand her those papers if she does not agree to your expectations of marriage, or if she goes behind your back to continue. And you continue to keep your eyes open, or depending on her reaction, just end it immediately. You need to protect yourself now. She's not your friend and she's not on your side. You better get that idea in your head because women who respect and love their husbands do not behave this way. Period. Story 2. I found out two months ago about my wife's affair. My wife and I have been married for just two years. We have a 21-month-old together and we spent the first year and a half of our marriage fighting for our lives. 
I didn't realize that she had extreme postpartum depression until I was in way over my head. She became wanting to X herself and wouldn't be convinced to let me take her to the doctor to get help. Eventually, it got so bad that she had no choice but to get help. In December of 2020, she started medication and therapy and kicked some serious tail. I'm still so proud of her and the progress she's made. Two months ago, I found out she was on a dating app. I confronted her by telling her that I know and I just want her to explain and help me understand what has happened. She came clean to an extent, lied about some details, but told me about a completely different secret. She had been sleeping with an XBF who lives in our neighborhood on nights where I work late. I was a full-time musician that did well for myself before she had out son. She wasn't able to work due to the depression so I got three jobs and gigs on the weekend to take care of us. Least I could do but I had to stop playing as much. The affair went on for months. For a year, she couldn't even give me a timeline. I found out later she started talking to him in at least May of 2020 out of spite through digging on my own. For her to offer such little information on something I'd think you could at least be able to ballpark left me without clear understanding of what transpired. She's trying hard to make it work but there is no trust now in the horror over the past year, which is not her fault, left me super messed up. During depression, she'd just scream and swing at me and say to me things no person has ever dared say. I lost my wife. I've had a problem from the start trusting her because I never knew what was going to happen. I walked on pins and needles for so long that survival mode was home. I've been in therapy and gained back my confidence and my ability to stand up for myself right in time to find this out. My first reaction is to make it work. I love her and I know she loves me, but she still has a problem being honest. And when I ask her things to challenge my distrust and suspicion, she gets defensive and immediately is no help to me. I tell her that I need her help, she apologizes and the whole thing repeats. How do I get her to understand that I need the painful truth? The truth that's hard to admit and hard to hear. There are little things that she will give me as an answer that just don't add up and then gets mad if I question her answer. It's like she's trying to pretend like nothing happened or it's in the past and shouldn't matter anymore. She has searched for lesbian bars and clubs, she's bi, which is fine but when I asked her about it, she said she was googling it for a friend so her and her bf could have a good time. I don't know what to do. I love her but this is toxic for us both. Part of me just wants to be a good dad and part ways due to mountain that I would be climbing to sort through all of this, especially if she isn't willing to do more than say she will help. I want her to be honest with herself so maybe I can finally understand what's going on but I still feel like I'm on the outside while she's begging me to stay and make this work. We have never. It was a monogamous marriage. And no, I've never cheated on her. I'm in no way perfect though. I had a platonic friendship with someone I dated when I was in my teens, early 20 seconds that I was open and honest about early in our dating life and into our marriage. She was completely fine and understood. But when she got pregnant, she started to have insecurities about it mixed with trust issues from the past and demanded. I stop all contact. I did but when we had our son, the friend wrote us congratulating us and I replied. This was me going back on my word. I told her the second I responded but it was still wrong of me to agree to do what she asked and then go back on my word no matter whether I agreed or disagreed with her demands in the first place. I've talked to an attorney when I first found out. I told her I wanted a divorce and after a few days of being mad at me, she begged me to give her another chance. Another chance has been given but I think you're right. There isn't much empathy on her part. Before this, I had all of the things that make a man. It was having to stop her from committing acts that messed me up. That's when I started to question things. She wasn't in control and I became whatever was needed, neglecting myself. I told myself it was only for a little while, but it became something where I had to choose between myself and her. It's by far the easiest thing to get a divorce and simplify life just being a single dad. I do well single. The kid is mine. I know for sure. DNA tests were done due to health reasons with my son. That's not from her, that's from the doctor. It doesn't make it manly for me to bail when crap gets hard any more than it justifies her affair when things get difficult. I'm not opposed to divorce. I'm simply asking for a non-biased opinion. An opinion other than my own. Like I said, divorce would be an easier route. It takes more courage to not automatically give up. But maybe throwing in the towel is the right answer. We are both 32. After taking the advice of not only my therapist but my attorney, I gave it time to cool down. And I'm starting to see clearer but she is still the same. She isn't showing signs of being able to clean her stuff up. I don't feel the need to subject myself to this kind of treatment. I never have. But this was the first time I made the decision to give marriage a real shot. It fell flat on its face and so I'm treating this next decision with the same importance. We casually spoke and it wasn't every day when we did. Never anything disrespectful. Just how are you and catch up on life, kids and stuff. It was more about how I felt like if I allowed someone to make rules for me suddenly out of the blue when it was known and agreed upon, I'd be giving up my ability to make my own decisions to accommodate insecurities. It ultimately wasn't worth my marriage at the time but those little compromises led to larger compromises on my part until I didn't like who I was looking at in the mirror. When I found out about the affair, it jolted me back to protecting myself. 
setting boundaries with her and not allowing anyone to cross them. I did in fact ask her if there were any other affairs but there has been no trace of any other. I know she had an affair in her last marriage. She told me this when we first met. The circumstances were different and her ex-husband was not ready yet to be a dad to her daughter. So, she was on her own. I don't worry that much about my son, he's young and will most likely remember very little of this if anything at all. But my stepdaughter is nine now. This is the only thing that breaks my heart. Not even the affair hurts as much as knowing that she is going to be hurt by this and needs protecting. Selfishly, it hurts that I won't see her except for in passing but four years as a proud stepdad doesn't grant me any right to see her. For her sake, I'm going to make this as easy and painless as she allows to. She is an excellent mother. She puts them first on the daily. She was a cool single mom when we met. So, 50-50 will be the agreement. Anything we have left between us now has to be dedicated to the kids, sparing them of any more bull crap. The income level things aren't a problem between my wife and me. When she's working full-time like she is now, she makes more than I do. During postpartum depression, she couldn't work at all, so I stepped up and changed careers to construction. Lots of money in construction haha but she is better now with the depression than she was. I do have the understanding of when she started talking to the OM it was in the worst part of the depression in our lives. She didn't want to be a live dude. Not an excuse for the fact that she kept it going, kept it secret. If she would have told me immediately, maybe there would be something here to save. But she stopped the affair and was never going to tell me. She got better with medicine, she kept the affair going. Once or twice a month. Always when I was at the studio. My one night a week she allowed me to go work on what was my full-time career, passion when we met. Do you know how incredibly difficult it is to record and release singles only one night a week? Just to have that back. This is my shortest relationship. The life of a musician or just any normal life doesn't prepare you for what the past two years have been. I've never had to stop someone I love from killing themselves. I've never feared leaving the house because if I do, I might not be there to stop her. The kids, I failed to see the purpose of your contribution. Go back, read what you responded to and tell me how we're not both saying the same thing. Keep in mind, the lockdown shut down my industry. Things are opening back up here and there, work is flowing back in. Not all is lost. I come out of this with my son. Keep in mind, I've been on the road since I was a teenager and have lived up until now selfishly. Only doing what I wanted when I wanted how I wanted. If you're chastising me for putting someone I loved before myself when they are suddenly losing their mind, knock yourself out. Rational male is practical but this is not the me begging situation. Aha, she's the one trying to make this work but isn't willing to really do what it takes. Over the past month, I've given it a shot to even see if it would be possible. She did poorly and reverted to defensive, so I am now here. In the past, I would have never put up with it. In fact, I'd just leave. But this was my first real shot at what I knew was going to be hard. That's marriage, but between surprise baby, jamming our lives together, learning to be a stepdad to a kid. Where do I fit into this family that's already here? This wasn't my world but I'd be lying if I didn't say that it was as valuable if not more than any crazy amazing experience I've had on the road and elsewhere. She was the only girl to ever rival my time with music. She decimated it aha. But it'll do good for writing, I guess. Have I confronted the XBF? I have. I wanted a physical confrontation but he was on edge. Nervous I was going to mess his life up. I debated for a while but decided to let him handle his business. He answered some questions, apologized profusely and that was that. I wanted him to be a jerk to justify a fight but I felt bad for him. And his family. The OM was a guy she dated for a few months. The bottom line is my child sleeps two streets over from this person. I'm not about to throw a grenade into his house while he knows where I live. If I do it, it'll be once my kid is elsewhere. I've done a great deal of thinking about this. If I blow up someone's household, I'd be putting my household in harm's way. I don't know this guy and he's obviously a piece of crap. If it was just about what I wanted, sure. I am naturally confrontational and I have to fight myself on this for the sake of my kid. I have to let go of what I can't control and take responsibility for what I can. But I do not care anymore what my soon-to-be ex-wife does as long as my child is safe. And working with her ex-husband who is in complete agreement concerning who she dates next. He and I both share the same concern. For his daughter and for my son. I am through trying to micromanage someone else's life. I'll be 33 this year. We dated for two years. Met her daughter after one year when things went from dating to serious. We had planned on settling down together regardless. I'm so not worried about life after this divorce. I'm the type that loves alone time. And when I'm ready to get back out there and date or whatever, I'm sure it'll be just as much of a crap show as it was years ago. I'll obviously be more cautious now. For myself and my son, lawyer, I've already had a consultation. I'll call and pay the rest of the retainer Monday morning and we'll file. There is no rug sweeping haha. If there was, why would no talk of divorce? Never have swept issues under the rug. Go back and read. DNA test was taken before birth due to genetic health risks with the child. I expect nothing from anyone. This rings in my head every day for two months. Not anyone else's. Four days ago, I signed up for perspective, support. 
Four days ago, I was starting to read two books simultaneously. I'm not gaining new information. Just finding what information I already have supports the best for myself and my son. There isn't a side of this that I haven't explored. But after reading these books that were recommended, it made me realize that I have all the information. I've just been questioning my own mind. I trusted myself and someone else based off the feeling that this was a safe thing to trust. Often that can leave you questioning your ability to arrive at the best solution. These books have clarified that. I've been made to feel like I'm losing my mind by someone who was indeed losing theirs. When you trust someone that you should not, this can happen. I gain back a little each day. I'm not working to help convince anyone of anything. This is for me. This is for my son and this is for our future. My comment, four days ago, you were giving her another chance. A day ago, you decided to file for divorce. You're all over the place making life-changing decisions on the fly. Understandable, but you can't expect people to believe your mind is firmly made up and there's no turning back. A bonus story 3, The Strong One, and Paul 38 years old. I was going through a really rough time recently I had found out my father has cancer and is passing on top of that my brother almost passed because of an infection in his leg due to a motorcycle accident and I had a friend who was homeless so I took him in. I haven't spoken to my mom or my sister since they gave custody of my kids to a foster family while I was away in the army. So, dealing with all these things I have now had to deal with my wife for the past 9 years being an alcoholic and a pill head. She abused me emotionally, mentally and physically she lied and stole from me and my family and cheated on me. I decided I needed to get away so me and my wife and my friend took off to go camping the week of Halloween and on that trip, I noticed that she was very distant. So, the morning of Halloween we climbed Old Baldy Trail at Garner State Park, Texas and she decided to tell me when we reached the top that she was leaving. I was crushed and heartbroken I didn't know what to do I had no service to call anyone I was wondering if jumping off that cliff was the easiest way to end all my pain. I finally gathered myself in tears I walked back to camp only to see her holding hands and hugging and kissing my friend. I was devastated I felt like I was having a heart attack. For the next few days, I had to watch another man hold my wife and there was nothing I could do. I wanted to ex him, but I thought about prison and that's not where I want to go. So, the next day I was approached by her and was asked if we could remain friends. I was excited about that because she hadn't spoken to me and now, I had a chance to talk to her so I told her yes and she could stay at the house while in my mind I was thinking about how to win her back. But this was short-lived as we got home. I got flowers and cards and nothing worked it just made her mad and she wouldn't be around me with this asshole so I told her I was going to bed one night and she came in while I had a gun to my chin she quickly stopped and naturally I did too. The reason that happened was I found two pairs of her panties in his pockets. We talked briefly about the situation and I put the gun away. Then she left. I called a friend and I left the house for a week while I was gone. I talked to her on the phone and told her I was going to have papers drawn up if he wasn't gone by the time I got home. So, she and him left the night before I came back. What I didn't know was the note she left for me to find later. It said I'm sorry I disappointed you and upset you but if you want me to leave, I'll go away. I again am so torn. I have almost killed myself twice already over this and almost lost my life to a broken heart. How do I deal with this? I am shattered inside and I love her but I hate her so much. I don't get to talk to the psychiatrist until the seventh they have pushed me back over and over like I'm not worth talking to I need help dealing with my mind I can't sleep or eat I refuse to take meds I don't like the way they make me feel and my anxiety is overwhelming so much so that I had to sit on the floor at the store because I couldn't be around people. I feel worthless like I never mattered how could someone walk away like that when I needed her the most in my life how could someone turn their back on their husband after you made vows those words mean something to me. I didn't ever give up on her but here I am alone again today. Even after she knew my first wife I caught sleeping with my dad and my fears of her leaving me or cheating. I'm not a drunk or a cheater or a beater I'm a good man. I'm just so lost and confused. I'm jaded about all of this my head is spinning. I don't want her in my life anymore I'm trying to move on it's been hard because I did love her very much but I lost a part of me when she left that I won't ever get back and it's not her I don't think I can trust anyone with everything I've been put through. I truly am trying but I can't be around my own family. I really have nobody. It's a long complicated story but I don't talk to anyone. And I don't have friends. Mom and sister I can't forgive for giving custody of my kids to a foster family while I was away in the army and they told me I'd have to file for custody and took me quite a while to get the money to fight the foster family but as I got finally got custody 10 years later the judge asked me why I didn't just get custody from my mother considering she still had the custody but it was her and my sister that conspired against me while I was in the military to give custody to another family because I was gone. 
and to find out that my mom and my sister could have given me custody of my children the entire time I don't understand I can forgive them but I will never forget I don't trust them around my kids so I don't talk to them I have cut them out of my lives and it's been 8 years now almost 9 my father I don't speak to him I know he's dying of cancer but I also caught him with my first wife he was a mean man growing up he beat us picked me up by my neck held me against the wall punched me our rooms weren't clean he would kick us from wall to wall he would throw things at us I just can't deal with him so I don't talk to him or see him and I have it in many years. My first wife got into drugs and I lost her when I was in the military along with my wife and kids our house I lost everything because of her and when I came back she was gone so I filed for divorce and while I was doing so I was living with my father going to college and my father agreed to allow her to stay at the house I wasn't very happy about the situation but she was apparently homeless and I didn't care whether she was or not at that point just like she had left me homeless with nothing but my children replaced in a foster family little did I know my mother had custody could have given me at any time but didn't say anything and watched me for years cry and beat my head against a brick wall and even then she kept a straight face and lied to me and my sister was in on it the whole time. She lost the kids because she couldn't stop doing drugs and alcohol at party and not taking care of the kids while I was away. She had men coming in and out of the house and my mother had called child protective services on her but when you are away it's not like you can just drop everything you are doing when you're in the military it doesn't work like that. I was never evaluated for PTSD I was sent back home with an injury and discharged with honorable discharge but still to this day I'm just now getting into the VA to get help it is taking them 12 years. When me and her first got together she didn't show her true colors to me not at first until after we were married and I believe strongly in my vow. When I said I do I meant every word for the rest of my life apparently. She had other plans I loved her very much even through all the hell she put me through that's why. When I am with someone I am with them wholeheartedly I am all in every part of me. I am just sorry I didn't wake up sooner. I haven't seen or heard from her in two months now and I felt like I was doing better but she left that note and I found it the other night it just tore me up inside she acted like it was me who wanted her to leave and just torn apart inside. This was the last text message I sent to her. So, you wanted to know what I thought about it well here you go considering you talked to Matthew and Julie about you being with Micah you just didn't know how to tell me well I appreciate you telling me in a roundabout messed up way. You couldn't even be a woman and just be honest up front straightforward as far as I'm concerned don't ever call me again don't ever talk to me again I have nothing left to say to you. I will file for divorce you are now dead to me you're just like all the rest. Every one of you have walked away from me everyone for better or worse huh? While the death do us part the feelings that I did have for you died on that mountain and the hell you put me through these last couple of weeks I will never forgive you for what you've done to me and these kids. You have made me mean and cruel and cold hearted just stay away. If you were so worried about me and the kids then you wouldn't have done what you did to us. This was your decision to leave us not the other way around and don't you ever forget it. It's hard on them because they saw what it was doing to me and they became depressed and I have to do something with them daily even if it's just going to the park or going to the dock to feed the turtles. We have to get out of the house it doesn't seem like home anymore and I don't know how to change that for them my son told me that I was a good mom. I didn't know how to take that. I have since deleted every photo burned every card and gave away all of her clothes. She literally left everything behind. She said she took everything she wanted and has since completely disappeared from our lives. Her biological son lives with me still but me and him have a better relationship than him and his mom ever could. I wanted him at first to go but he isn't talking to her he is very mad at what she did to us and he talks to her but not very much and he doesn't tell her about me or the kids and I also told him that if he allowed her back in this house while I was gone that he would jeopardize his place to live so me and him have an understanding and respect for one another but we do not discuss his mom. I have full custody they're not here kids and she never adopted them in our marriage so she has no rights to our children and as far as insurance goes. I don't have insurance I can't afford it but my kids do have chip and I have the VA I am starting counseling but that doesn't take place until the 7th of this next month. Right now, I just do not have the funds because of this lockdown deal has wrecked my business I'm self-employed I'm a contractor and nobody wants us in their house remodeling right now. Not to mention house payments and taxes are due it's a lot to take on right now so the funds are just not there it's depressing to say the least I just want this to be done and over so I can move on. Today has been the best for me by far I worked on my house and did a lot of necessary repairs and actually had the motivation to do it thank you guys for encouraging me and talking with me I haven't been able to talk to anyone face to face so this helped tremendously. And as for divorce I have taken the liberty of going online and found the documents I need to file at the courthouse yet. Yeah. It's going to cost me a little bit but there is also the inability to pay documents that I found as well so this might not be as expensive as I thought. I found my documents under the county courthouse where I reside just have to go to the courthouse tomorrow and see which ones I need for sure as I will be talking to the district attorney's office as well. 
I'm filing an emergency temporary orders for a protective order I'm pretty sure I qualify as she has been arrested for drinking and abuse. I had her arrested a few years back and with the new threat of her stating she would kill me if I kept the kids from her that would constitute as a threat so I think she might be in jail for a while and he will be again out on his behind without her that makes me smile. I have been praying very hard and out of nowhere I have met someone. I'm not sure how to take this but I'm leaving this in God's hands. I'm a very strong person and I have always tried to do what's right and good. I believe sometimes in life you are helping a woman to become better even if it's for another man. It hurts but I believe I can love again and be loved again so I have hope and faith. I have moved on and I have found someone who is a God-fearing woman that is after my own heart. I have never been happier today I have a friend who is more understanding than I ever could have imagined God is truly amazing and he does answer prayers. I needed this today I have something to look forward to every day now and I don't ever want to go back to her she made me feel like I was never worthy of her and all the problems she caused in my life. Everything has stopped I have no more thoughts of her and I don't see her face every time I close my eyes I am healing faster and stronger every day and lesson learned no one will ever be allowed to live with me again ever. I will keep a close and watchful eye on my friends if I obtain any in the future. An update I have been going out with my son and went to visit my mom and sister after 8 years of not speaking to them it has helped but at the same time not without old feelings and anxiety. I have started writing more and playing the guitar to help pass the time and even got lost in my bible for about 6 hours one night. I am being more active and eating better sleep pattern is still out of whack but it will get better, I hope. Taking time for myself going on walks and feeding the ducks when my dog doesn't try to jump in the water after them. I found out she has a cancerous tumor that has rapidly grown and may not be around for much longer I've had her 12 years it kills me to know she is not going to be here soon but right now I'm enjoying my time with her and trying to make her as comfortable as possible. I'm staying active on here some of you can see me here and there. I'm trying to remain positive and keep my thoughts clear of what has happened even found an old friend from 20 years ago on Facebook today so I'm not as alone as I was it's getting better. I haven't been able to do my running in a few weeks due to rolling my ankle in a pothole. I could barely walk so I go to the doctor Monday and if everything is good and I'm cleared I'll have that to look forward to I have a lot of goals in running including going for the world record this year if my body permits. So, I got a letter in the mail today and I just opened it and I'm not sure what to make of this. It's my friend's old lady that ran off with my old lady and she goes into telling me how sorry she is that this happened to the both of us and that I should write her but she understands if I don't and she still lets him see her son and my kids are around her kid. I didn't even know he had an old lady much less that he had a kid but apparently it is her kid from another man and not his biological. I'm so blank inside at the moment should I even respond to her she goes on to saying maybe we can be friends. I've never even met her or know what her intentions are. Should I be worried about this? I'm so lost. My comment, it's okay to just start running. Things will keep on getting better as you distance yourself from that woman. Stay safe and look towards the future.